Okay. Now let's get us launch live on Facebook. Got something. You got it. All right, most likely live. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another wonderful edition of the Written Undead podcast. I am Jack, well, Mehoff this week, but normally known as Jack Childress. That guy over there is Richard Ryan Rose, hiding in the background, keeping an eye on the comments, Angel Ramon. And our special guest this week is the one and only Sean Chesser. Welcome to the show, my man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, Give us a little rundown. How did you get started on this uh, wonderful zombie journey? Wow, man. It's, I started writing trudge on my iPhone, on the, the yellow pad, believe it or not, just to, for myself. As my boy, Cade, was playing in the indoor gym here in Portland, Oregon. It's a, it rains a lot here. So when he was little, I'd take him up to this indoor gym. And this was just an exercise to try to finish something for once. You know, I just copied and pasted all those emails to myself and made this novel, 60,000 words, whatever, and uh, just for myself. and let a couple of people read it and they're like, dude, you should look into self-publishing. I had no idea about self-publishing. And I, I put the cart before the horse though. And I published it before having it uh, thoroughly went through by an, a, an editor. And, but yeah, we had people liked it. So I thought maybe I can do this. And a couple of years later, I stopped doing what I was doing before and I've been writing full time for almost a decade. Dang. So when you first really got to go and what was it that attracted you to doing the zombie genre? Oh, I've been a fan ever since, you know, my, my mom let me watch, uh, what was it uh dawn no night of the living dead was the first one in about 1980 so when i turned 12 she's like yeah we'll get you a vhs and get to watch that for your birthday party with some friends and got me pretty much hooked and uh you know went, went to read watch dawn of the dead next and uh you know i've been a fan ever since and you know when i started writing there wasn't a whole lot of zombie books out there to to, to go for you know to get into there was a few day by day and you know some others uh but now it's now it's a lot of a lot of pickings <clears throat> Now, do you feel like the whole zombie genre is starting to trail off a little bit? Because from my perspective, it seems like it's going up, not no, down. No, no, no. I, I sat on a panel uh, a number of years ago with uh, Craig DeLuey and uh, Klein, and who else was there? There was quite a few of us. Uh, you might know him, uh, Angry, Angry American, Chris Weatherman. We sat mm -hmm. on this, and, and that was one of the questions. And to a person all down the line, uh, we were like, no, it's, it's not done. As long as there's upheaval in the world and shit like that people are looking for some kind of escapism and zombies are perfect for it in my opinion well yeah so richard when you started doing your zombie thing you had your big inspirations so sean what were your inspirations who did you did you kind of tailor yourself around anybody or did you just say i'm gonna be me I just said, I'm well you know romero is my inspiration I, I have the classic romero zombies in my first series the slow Shambling zombies, uh, no, not thinking. They don't. They're not self-aware or anything like that. Uh, so I'd have to say Romero was my first. Uh, basically, you know, the, the second would probably be the, the, my style of writing. I, I'm a big, huge uh, fan of Lee Child, the, the Reacher series, and mm -hmm. I, I've drawn to his style of writing, uh, his action scenes, and, and kind of clip sentences and whatnot. I've, I've only in the last couple of years learned how to put together bigger sentences that make fucking sense that my editor doesn't throw away. You know. <laughs> so <clears throat> oh excuse me there i got a little choked up um is there anything in the zombie genre that you just stay away from like a trope you just can't stand no it's a big tent man it's there for every i mean everything's everything's good i i honestly i don't read in the zombie genre that when i'm writing in it i i very few books i've read a couple of arcs for different people but i just don't because i don't i you know for fear of uh somehow pilfering someone's ideas just by osmosis or something or by you know an accident i just try not to yeah yeah i totally get it sean yeah man i i used to have the same film myself when i started writing to be honest uh -huh. well it does seem like uh, it would be kind of hard not to you know mimic other people just because well there's yeah. so many now you know it's like every you know you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a zombie off you know exactly yeah yeah I uh, mainly I read uh, military thrillers and, you know, I'm a big Brad Thor fan, and Vince Flynn, rest in peace and Tom Clancy and that kind of stuff is what I, I read. You know, Jack Coe, um, Jack Carr, excuse me, his, his stuff is really good. 
<clears throat> well, I'll give you another one. If you just, it's more along the secret agent kind of a line, but Gareth Stevens, Agent Carrie Harris stuff, uh-huh. it's top shelf. It's top shelf. All right. So agent that's Carrie Harris, Gareth Stevens. All right. Yep. That'd be one to definitely check out if you Sounds just good. find yourself wanting something new because there's always something new out there. It's just a matter of going sure. to find it. For sure. So what gets you the most excited when you're writing a book? Man, what gets me the most excited? Uh, when the things just fall together, when, when, I, when I, I get a, a plot, when a plot twist comes or when I get a story arc that's going to work, when I figure out how to make something work and without having to force it too much, I guess just when things, you know, what, what do you call that? Uh, when things happen just out of the blue. I don't know. I can't think of the word right now, but just when things work, you know, when I don't have to put something aside and come back to it later when things are flowing. Well, how much time do you spend researching? Not a lot, really. When I'm writing, I, I go through the, the book and I write the book and I put double X's where I, where I need to research shit. Because if I look go too long into the rabbit hole of the internet, I'll end up on YouTube and I'll end up here and there and I'll waste, you know, half a day doing that. So as I'm writing, if it's something I don't know the exact specifics, I'll put a couple X's there and I'll just search back for the X's and then I'll start researching stuff. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it'll work. I just have to get the details right. Okay. Well, before the show started, we were talking about um, your adventures with getting your narrator. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the, I guess, the two narrators that you've had. Yeah. Well, um, Chris, uh, I can't even think of his last name right now. I, I, shoot. Uh, anyways, my first narrator had some life issues happen after about seven books. It's been quite a few years now. And I lost him. And so I got Adam Paul. I went through, a, my wife and I listened to a lot of auditions until we, we uh, both thought, you know, this, we narrowed it down. And we both uh, blindly said, this is the guy. And uh, it turns out after getting him, I found out that he's a, uh, an actor. He was on uh, How I Met Your Mother or Married Your Mother. I never watched the series, but he was a, he was a recurring actor. He's a director. He's real professional. That's what I really like about him. Is he's says he's going to do something. He finishes it. He has an editor that's top notch. He is enge- engineering. We've never had anything to kick back from from ACX when we put put files up and stuff. So that's that's really that's awesome. Well, for anybody that's thinking about becoming an author and they're going to start going through this process, what advice would you have for them? I uh, just finished that first book. That's nine tenths of the battle, man. Just get that first book done and, and go from there. Uh, you know, I have a couple of things that I, that I live by, just life rules. One of them is the golden rules, treat people how you want to be treated. And, and I, I've tried to do that to every other author that's act, that reached out to me for help or advice. And I got it from other people. Um, you know, uh, Mark Tufo and uh, John O'Brien and, uh just passed away joe joe mckinney he those guys helped me a lot in the back channels um getting started and uh so i try to do the same if i can definitely awesome so now i'm looking at your background what is on that top shelf um i've got some walking dead stuff i've got frank castle the punisher a statue we don't call them they're not figures or statues right oh, okay some stormtroopers and in the back is uh rick uh rick grimes blowing away a zombie it's one of those uh i think what are they called um ah this guy's a sculptor that does them they, that's one of 1500 they made i bought it at a comic con it's pretty oh, cool it's, it's got some serious detail to it i think that's the top mm-hmm. shelf i got some skulls and some other stuff and jason mask and just stuff i've collected at places i've been this and that and the other thing well, that is yes. super freaking cool. Yeah, it's called a Mc, McFarlane is the name of this this statue up there. Is he, the, oh, he okay. did uh, comics and stuff, Dark Horse comics. Yes, uh, Spawn. Yep, Spawn's is yeah, Spawn is his baby for sure. <clears throat> Wicked. What you got, Richie? Well, I mean, yeah, I was just checking out the background there. It like, you know, all I have right here in my house is uh, my window from my from my uh dining room here but uh yeah i definitely need to film a show from my office at uh at work because it's all zombed out and everything all the i've, young I've got a few, few office, they, pictures they, here and there yeah. i got a uh, uh what is it it's a rick grimes cover um the fellow that that, that did batman for dc uh adam uh john uh, john adams no 
can't remember his last Adam name. Adam Rich? Anyways, no. the, 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 the artist for Batman, he, he had this on his, at a comic con, he had that sitting on his table. And I'm like, you, you drew this Rick Grimes thing for, so I guess he did a couple covers. And, and so he signed it for me and he drew a zombie head. Cool, so cool. I got some mix and knacks or knickknacks around my walls here and there. Yeah. Like you have your nice wall back there. It all started with one book and then it just kind of uh, became a thing. And now I've actually expanded. I have the angel wing, which fitting those two words go together well. And I have the wicked wing, which is straight out in front of me, which is Merrill David's series. Mm -hmm. Another great series, by the way. So it just became an obsession and I can't help it. In fact, there's Richard right there. And by the way, all those books are indie published books. Yes. There's yeah. not a single big name King Koontz whatever although i have been tempted to get my hands on the original jaws because that's like my favorite movie of all time and i love the book right right Peter personally, thought the, yeah. personally thought the book was actually better than the movie but that's just me that movie ruined the ocean for me for from the age of about kidding. nine on <laughs> man i couldn't even get in a creek <laughs> yeah, i think that guy gave a lot of people a lot of nightmares oh yeah for show. Sure. So what do you do in your spare time, if you have any spare time? Oh, man, just family, you know, shuttling the kids. My daughter's actually going to be, she's 18 now, she's going to be to college, but shuttling my boy to and from school, and he's a teenager, he's a freshman, and that's it, man. Just, you know, being a, being a dad. Being is, it a dad making you fit, is it make you feel old yet? No, man, I'm not that old. I, I don't mm. feel too old. Good. I'm 53 good. I going on 54, but I feel, I feel pretty young. Yeah, 53 going on 16. There you go. I turn 50 next week. So I'll be 47 next or in April. So I guess we're all kind of chasing each other oh, around. Then we got the young buck angel there. over here. He looks about 20, 25, something like that. How old uh, is 31. 31. Okay. All right. You look young in that picture. Yeah. That's that. that and that was recent. So yeah, I'm pretty young for my age. So that's good. Good living. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, so, but soon I'll be my Jack. Don't worry. I'll be. I'll be my jack uh, with a beard and bald head soon. Mm -hmm. It'll be a good look on you, though. I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush to get that old, but it's gonna happen. Yeah. Hey, that's all we can any of us hope for is that we get to get old. Well, you now so, we talked about like what some of your inspirations were, were and everything, and you know, as far as you know Romero and 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 what have you. But what got you into writing in the first place? It basically finished something for once that I started. And I got sober in 06 and I started writing after that, trying to trying to just try to do something, you know, trying to do a little of this and that, and putting my thoughts down on paper. And then, like I said, you know, it was about 2008 or nine when I started writing Trudge, which, you know, it's, it's 60 some odd thousand words, but I never expected it to be a novel. I was just writing it for my boy, Cade, and for my, maybe my mom to look at or my, whatever, my daughter. And, and you know, that my protagonist's name is Cade. Grayson. So my boy's name is Cade Gray Chesser. So he's my son. Cade Grayson is how that worked out. And hmm. um, the, the daughter of Cade Grayson is Raven. And my daughter's name in real life is Raven. She didn't take too well to that at first. Mm -hmm. being, uh, you know, in the book, being her brother's uh, <laughs> daughter. But, you know, that it, when I finally finished, uh, you know, something uh, and, and put it out there, it was kind of a watershed because, you know, I coming up, I only child, kind of shy, kind of small in high school. I'm not small anymore, but uh, just it was uh, it was kind of coming out of that shell of, of being an alcoholic and drinking for 20 plus years. Um, finally, being able to finish something that I started. You now they said I use this in my books. Integrity. There's two eyes, man. I will, and I did, and so finally, you know, I got some integrity in my life, and I've been sober almost 16 years. So, damn, congratulations, man. Awesome. Thank you. So, how do you? You know, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there struggling with alcoholism, drug addiction, things like that. What was the catalyst that pushed you to say, I'm done? This this has to stop. Uh, health issues. March 13th, 2006. I'm trying to keep alcohol down. My daughter's sleeping in the other room. She's two. And I'm throwing up blood in my laundry sink in the garage. Oh, that's damn. it. That's all I needed to see. You know, I already I already had seen, you know, the the negative effects of it for years, but mm -hmm. you know, no Deweys or none of that stuff, none of the problems of the law, but it was just health that finally did it. And just stop digging, man. Said I'm done. Everyone well, once has again, a man, story. way to go. Thank you That's very much. Freaking, freaking absolutely yeah, saved, awesome. Saved a 12 year marriage and uh, be married 29 years this summer. 
yeah, it's uh, it's well worth it for me. Cool. Everyone's different. Like I said, I don't have a problem with anyone drinking or whatever, but everyone's their own person. And for me, I reach my limit. Well, hell yeah. Now, do you ever write any of your, we'll call it your perceived weaknesses or whatever into your books, like things that you may have issues with and you're like, you know what, I'm well, going to throw this in there. <laughs> Uh, Duncan Winters from my my first series, Surviving Zombie Apocalypse. He's basically more of me than anything. He's a, a guy fighting the the drink, and he's a compulsive gambler. I'm a compulsive gambler. Also, I haven't gambled for the same amount of time as I I stopped gambling the same day I stopped drinking. Kind of a curveball my wife threw at me because she knew that if I keep gambling, every one of these bars here in town in Portland, Oregon, is a basically a, sl- a casino. Also, mm-hmm. uh, going you go into a barber shop long enough you're gonna get your hair cut right so she's figured if i'd keep gambling i'd end up drinking again so i don't gamble either and um duncan in the books he's gambled away a inheritance a, a house before the zombie apocalypse of course and mm-hmm. uh it, later on in book uh i think it's seven draw i do his backstory and explain how he lost his ability to fly he's an aviator he's a we he flew who he was in the in the vietnam war and he he fucked he fucked that away too because of drinking. But you know the zombie apocalypse happens, and lo and behold, his skills are needed now. So he, he's he's getting sober in the books too. So yeah, Duck and Winters is probably me in the books, although I'm not that old. That's still really cool, man. I love this. I love the background because it's one thing to read a book, listen to an audio book, and mm-hmm. enjoy it, but to get the background, like why this part got wrote, why that part got wrote. Mm-hmm. When you were going through the series. What were some any stumbling blocks you may have had, like moments where you just froze, like shit. Now what? Oh man, I don't know. I, I probably doing a, a cliffhanger and getting skewered for it between book one and book two. You know, Trudge, I left it off as cliffhanger, and then Soldier on, I came off right after that. Um, I didn't stop it there because I I was I couldn't keep writing. I stopped it there because I thought that was going to be my only book. You know, I didn't really think I was going to publish anything. And so getting over that was, and, you know, getting over, I don't, I don't read inter, uh, reviews anymore. I, early on I did, and you read a couple of bad ones, you know, and it, to me, it, it just sent me spiraling and I got great advice from, I think it was John O'Brien and Tufo both. They're like, dude, don't read them, you know, fuck, don't read them, just write. And I write for me now. And that's what I used to kind of write for other people. And for people, you know, reviewers, I'd leave a review about something. I try to write for that. And it just doesn't work for me. I'm a pantser and I write for me. I write something that I'd want to read. And so far it's worked out. People seem to like most of, most of my stuff. Does that ever make you nervous though, to think there's so many people that seem to have your same mentality? No, man. (laughs) To each their own. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, um, there's so many different types of zombies There's so many different ways to start the zombie apocalypse so many different ways to try to end the zombie apocalypse what made you go with your zombie apocalypse you know it's wild mine in 2010 when i was writing that it the the omega virus is what i called it Mm -hmm. big fan of the omega man you know the the movie and whatnot so i I picked omega virus it came out of a, a lab in Wuhan, china leaked out and it, it was uh, use it or lose it. You know, they couldn't contain it. So what they do, they seeded the world with it. That's exactly, I wrote that back in 210 before. I think we're living through some of that right now. I, I you know, my personal opinion, I don't think that thing was uh, nature. I think it was being tweaked around and either got out or I don't know, something. And now something we're all paying the price. We're all paying the price and they won't, they won't fess up to it. And now we're having a fucking Olympic games over there. It blows me away. <laughs> no shit yeah thankfully i've never been a fan of the olympics anyway so it's not like yeah. I'm boy not like i'm boycotting i wouldn't have been watching anyway yeah. but same here. here same here so now you were in the military what branch did you serve in no. and what was oh you weren't oh. nope 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 didn't serve didn't serve my my father uh, air force uh uncle world war ii but no i i didn't you know and it was i, I took the as fabs and i think 89 out of high or no 87 out of high school and mm-hmm. I wanted to fly helicopters, you know, and I was told, man, eh, you're going to have to go in. You're going to have to work on them for a while. Maybe you can go to officer, you know, become a, a warrant officer and maybe you can fly later, but there's no guarantees. And, you know, my history, I, I was drinking and partying and stuff at the time. And I just pretty much said, fuck it. And so I, that's, that's the main reason I didn't go. I would have been eating sand in Kuwait, working on helicopters in Desert Storm. And, you know, and I wouldn't have met my wife, which is kind of a serendipitous part of that. But, you know, I, I met my wife 
at a party. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. She's, she's normal. She's not really a drinker, but yeah, I met her at a party and the rest is kind of history. But uh, I, I, I hold military, anyone served or is serving on a high pedestal, man, because that, that's a calling that uh, more people should, should be drawn to. And, you know, I really appreciate my dad, what he did. You know, he, he was uh, in the Air Force during the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, down in California. Basically, when they were all going back and forth, you know, he was electronics, believe it or not. When they're going back and forth with the, the behind the scenes stuff, he was Pat's and he was a SAC base, SAC, B-52 SAC base down there. And he would pass back and forth the stuff. And he, he had an instrumental part. And, uh, you know, he he passed uh, 2019, May 20, he, he killed himself. He, he committed suicide. It's oh. one of the, one of the you know, we, we lose 22 a day. And, and uh, yeah, but so but I didn't serve. But, you know, I, I and, and in my writing, I try to get, be very accurate. I don't want to disrespect anyone. So I have a few people in the background that help me out and read my books and point out my, my missteps when I have them. I was actually about to ask who some of the people you leaned on, you know, to make sure you hit everything right on the mark, whatever. So that, that's yeah, really there's cool. a few, there's a few of the, the, the newest fellow who reached out to my editor, believe it or not, he, he write he beta reads for Brad Thor. He, he dropped that out there and I'm like, holy shit, because I'm Brad Thor's one of my favorite authors right now. I'm reading all his mm-hmm. black guys, his series. So, and this guy is good, man. He pointed out a few things, you know, I'm, I'm a shooter. I've been shooting my whole life and I've, ton of firearms and I'm, i i love it and i go to a range i belong to a range and i have my cc i have my concealed carry and so i know the basics about firearms but he's called me on a few things so it's nice nice cool. to what people in your corner what's your favorite firearm i have a sig uh, mpx it's my new <laughs> baby it's a a little nine millimeter uh, it's a pistol you call it a pistol but it has a brace and i, I can shoot it with the brace and suppressed and i've got a um uh, sig romeo 8t optic on it that makes it pretty accurate so that's a fun little gun to shoot but i'm a i'm a i'm a glock guy my gave my dad gave me my first glock 19 about 25 years ago and i've got several different glocks and i got a lot <laughs> i just like guns i like shooting hell to the yeah so oh here we go again <clears throat> i gotta love the winter weather here in tennessee jacks my allergies up something fierce so when you get into like the writing about like military vehicles or vehicles in general, is there someone you go to for that kind of information? Like the specifics of how, like if you climb up into a certain military Humvee, this is how your display looks. This is different gadgets and things you have. Is there anyone you go to for that stuff? I don't, I don't get that too in detailed in that, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I mean, I, I know a Humvee does not have a key. I know it's push start and whatnot. So I'm not going to say you're going to get in and turn the key. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> No, I, I generally don't. I go to a lot of air shows, so I've, I've gotten to go inside of, you know, Ospreys. And so I know the general dimensions and I've been in a bunch of different helicopters. I've flown in a couple of helicopters. Uh, the pinnacle was flying in a, a little bird with the doors off around all over Hawaii, over Pearl Harbor and whatnot. That was, uh, I had that grin pasted on my face for probably a week after that. So, um, yeah, I, I find a way to either pick someone's brain or, or, you know, I don't like Wikipedia, but YouTube's a good, good source. <clears throat> okay so do you have any uh, excuse me jack no, go ahead i actually got a question for sean uh you Good write angel. zombie you write exclusively zombie or would you be open to op- writing in other genres later on yeah that funny you ask um i was kicking around ideas up in the back with a couple people about doing a a western set in the time of the new madrid quake so that a boil opens up sand boil and outcome demons so i transport my protagonist back to the what, you know, maybe he's an old uh, Green Mountain boy or something. I don't know. Figure out some kind of a backstory for him and have Kid Grayson be fighting demons in the in the Wild West. I'm also right now writing a, a alternative uh, history universe book, whatever. It's set in today uh, with my Pale Riders. They're out. They've already uh, left the the service. You know, they they've uh, separated, and I've, I'm writing backstories. Follow them, and and the band's going to be drawn back together by something. But actually, by the Kabul debacle. You know, Afghanistan, the the Kabul thing, and so mm-hmm. it's a, a lot of bad guys over here, man. There, there's a lot of bad guys coming over here that they don't know who they are, or where they are, coming across the border, or whatever. So that's a catalyst for it. That'll be the protagonist, and I'm writing that right now. <laughs> uh, quite a few thousand words into that story. It's called uh, "The Hitter." Is the, the series first book is "Quiet War." I'm glad you said that because that was one of the things that. In fact, let me pull up my text from Doug since he's seemingly not going to be able to make it. 
But da, 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 da. if one of y'all want to carry on for me while I find what he was talking about, because he was a few things. That, OK, he said, hey, I got questions, uh, stuff that people need to know about Riker, the promise, the plea and what's happening to the. I guess main characters is what he meant. Do, 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 do. Let's well, see. I, my latest book in that series is just about to go live, but March 13th it'll, on all formats, it's called The Plea. It's book four. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it, it'll be answer a lot of store, uh, questions from book three, The Preps, Precipice. It was actually left on a cliffhanger, The Precipice. And uh, there are a couple characters that were in dire straits. And uh, this next book starts off and we hear what happened to them and we meet some new people. And it, it sprawls across it spans the the western united states arizona navajo lands or some navajos the navajo nation's locked down pretty tight against the zombies they're, they got some they got their shit together and uh it's pretty pretty fun to write that one ends up in so, vegas so you know when you uh when you release everything out in all formats all at once how do you go about that because i mean like yeah you know, I, I, I published one so far but yeah you know, i published it in you know the digital and print Right. and then got it recorded so did you just do it all before you send it all out i i had to ask a couple of people behind the scenes and they, they told me that you got to call up acx and mm-hmm. uh, they're they're it's amazing they don't care for any i used to think that it was just the, the big five publishers had could their people could get the pre-sale on the audiobooks and all that stuff all you got to do is ask man i just so i i i do the i finish the ebook and the print book that's all formatted that's in the can right now for me yeah. and it's on pre-order uh and then right now my uh adam paul is performing the the book and i'm going to be listening to chapters as he finishes them and then they go to his editor and his sound person for engineering and the 28th is when that all that stuff has to be in finished for the press the you know publish button or whatever they, they call it on acx publish and um they they tell you that you have to have all that in by that day. ACX tells you this, and then they will give you. I picked March thirteenth as my release date, so that's the pre order is from March May twenty or February twenty eighth. If we get it in on time, then they'll have time to do the quality check. You know they have to have their people listen to it, make sure it's perfect, and then it will release on March thirteenth, which is my release date for all my other stuff. So you just have to work it. And they work with you. You just call them up. The ACX has some of the nicest people on the phone, man. That's cool. Yeah, that's good to know. I'll remember that for next time. I've got another one coming out soon, so I'd like to just sit and get it all out there, audio, digital, print, everything just be available. Yeah, when you have a simultaneous release, it, it kind of helps pump your, your stuff up, yeah. your, your rankings and your author ranking and stuff like that. It gets more eyeballs on your work. So okay. who helps you with your um, advertising? This dude right here. <laughs> All you I'm, I'm the marketing department i'm the marketing department i you know i have contractors i i have uh angry chair designs does my little book you know ads that i put in you know the 3d images of your books and stuff like that um i, I just have my last cover by uh, covers by christian christian benchelin he does a lot of your guys's covers a lot of our covers indies but i'm i'm it man and i'm i'm stumbling through it learning new things i don't i don't micromanage at all i don't go into analytics and clicks and all that crap because it just makes my head want to explode i just find an ad that worked and i usually will just <laughs> pump it through again you know or, or you know change the cover or change a little bit of words but use the same uh what do you call it uh, the the group that you send it out to the same focus okay well in honor of my main man angel ramon do you keep up with word count as you're writing i do not i used to but now I write, I write, I write. And sometimes I'll look at it, you know, you can't help but notice, but mm-hmm. I don't obsess over it. I don't keep a daily log. And it's funny, my, my chapters used to be 1,200 words, 1,500. And now the last book, I did uh, 36 chapters or 34. They're almost, each one is 2,800 to 3,000 words. And I don't know why. It's just that's when the chapter ended and, you know, the scenes yeah. and the whatever. Hey, but, don't feel uh, bad, Sean. I mean, for me, that's about the same thing. Sometimes I got like 3,000 to 5,000 word chapters in my uh-huh. book. So, so, you know, I mean, yeah, Jack, you know, I don't know if Jack uh, kind of, you kind of keep track of it, but if you see by my Betrayal of the OK9 books, you kind of get the, get the gist that it, it, it putting on chapters. Right. 
I stopped really, I think the reason why I stopped keeping track was because I was kind of depressed when the, the plague hit, you know, and my kids are at home, going Bye. to school at home, and I'm getting a lot of my time sucked up into that. It's depressing to look and say, I only wrote 500 words today. I mean, that's not, if someone writes 500, that's pretty good, but I, I'm always shooting for over a thousand. And yeah, but, but, now no, but, I just kind of let things happen, man. Like, right. I just can't force the issue. No, you're right. Absolutely. Do you use a uh, Facebook or Amazon ad campaigns at all? I've never used Amazon. I use Facebook pretty much exclusively for my ad campaigns oh, to push out to my my readers that I have on my websites and or my my Facebook pages and stuff. And that pushes Amazon out to ads? IG, which IG isn't. I mean, I don't even go on IG very much, but I seem to get a lot of people on IG clicking on stuff and whatnot. Oh. And I don't trust them farther as I can throw them. I don't know how many sales I get out of it, but as long as I'm still you know making a living and doing better each year at least holding steady i don't really try to what's that old saying if it's not broken don't fix it so mm -hmm. I, I just try to keep it simple stupid and that's I, just no, I, works for me man i'm you know i'm the opposite i'm mostly on amazon ads that i that helps me oh, good, you know, good. obviously it's different with source for different folks so you know so you, you recommend it. Do, how, do, how does that work there's is it like you have to pay per click or i've heard yeah, pay people per talk click. about it's paper, paper click, click okay. right mm -hmm. and so they put your your images of your books on like people like are searching for something they want to buy and right. I, I, it'll, it, it'll show like, up over there yeah like sponsored products uh you know products that you know sponsored products to this you know and then you have to yeah, use I've keywords and all that right 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 and but, you but just, for me i use automatic good, huh? targeting because i don't have time for keywords to be honest right 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 yeah you can do that on facebook too and i've noticed that automatic targeting didn't hasn't worked as well i haven't gotten as many clicks but that's I don't know I I just don't want to dig into it too much. What I'm kind of words write. you said? Now books to write. What kind of yeah. words were you talking about? Word what words versus what other words? What were you talking about? I think like keywords that will draw them to your book, like zombies or apocalypse or okay special forces or I don't know stuff like that. Yeah. If I'm right, is that right, Angel? Buzzwords, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's very cool. Now. If the zombie apocalypse started today, where would you go? I would bug in for a while just to feel it out first. Let the other people go out and feed the zombies. <laughs> 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 I mean, seriously, if this shit show happened for a while, I, I honestly, if there was a zombie apocalypse, I would be more afraid of breathers, um, especially where I live, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. crazy here, dude. It's fucking oh, crazy. Gosh. It's not the city I grew up in. It's it's 180 degrees from where I grew up. Just you know, it's complicated. We can't really move yet, but it's it's on the horizon, Montana or somewhere like that. Oh, you got a question? I would here? I would bug in. I would bug in and just try to use the the whatever stuff is still going, whatever you know, social media, or I can try to glean as much information as possible because I don't have a bug out retreat. I don't. I'm not as wealthy. <laughs> I I can't afford that. I don't have any you know any friends or family that have nice places out there. So it'd be just wait and see, and then you know probably probably head out. Now we got a question here. Uh, yeah, the first question of the day for you, uh, uh, Sean, uh, from Steve. He asks the Oops compound. How did you come up with the idea? And is this based on your bug out location? Oh, the Eden compound. It's called the Eden compound, but uh, it's funny. Oops is what uh, is what Duncan Winters calls his younger brother because he's, he's substantially younger, and uh, was he was like, Oops, and uh, <laughs> and that just funny. came to me. It came to me because D Duncan Winters, was, you know, he got back in a helicopter and he's flying Cade to the to the Eden compound where his brother has, you know, he did this because of Y2K. He, he, him mm -hmm. and his buddy put money in, built this because they thought the world was going to end at Y2K. I mean, I kind of did. A lot of us might have. And um, and so Duncan, I don't I don't want the reader to know this until you see it through his brother Logan's eyes. But um, he wrote oops on the front of the helicopter with chalk. And, and I, I had him bring the chalk from the book seven, uh, Duncan's winter story, Drawl. So he, he used the chalk for something in that book. So that was precluding this. And so he, he writes oops on the front of the helicopter. So his brother would know it's something only he knows and his brother knows. And so his brother was actually going to gonna shoot the helicopter down with a Barrett 50 caliber. And uh, it, it stopped him from doing that because he saw that written on the helicopter. So oh, that's yeah, ingenious. That, that just kind of came to awesome, me. Awesome, awesome. I don't so, know uh, I got that, but just came. Hey, inspiration comes from strangest places. Now, one thing I ask a lot 
when you're out and about, say you're going on a grocery store run, you got to go to Walmart, wherever, do you find yourself just kind of what people watching and thinking this person has no shot? You know, this person, they might actually have a shot at surviving the zombie apocalypse. Do you catch yourself just looking at just normal day to day life <laughs> and incorporating it into a oh, book? Uh, not so much, man. I try to steer clear of people as much as possible. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, when I go to a restaurant or something or eat out, I like to sit with my back to the wall as close as I can to a corner. Uh, I'm not totally paranoid, but I just, I don't trust people, man, <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually the, the opposite. Way. I, you know, I, I, I kind of see people, I judge people. I mean, I'm like you, Sean, I'm like to keep away, but, you know, I do that. The, the, a part of me does judge and tell, right. oh, that person won't survive and that will, you know, yeah, I'm that kind of guy. But I, I don't say it out now, though. I keep it in, right. in my head. But I am that kind of so guy. Far as, I, I hate people. Say who I'm going to shame, you. you know. <laughs> Remember Shane yeah. tripped that big guy in, in The Walking Dead, the big fat dude with the, with the shotgun or whatever, and he yep. ended up being zombie chow, and, and Shane that's ends the, up getting yeah, away. Let's just say, uh, Jack and the others are nucky. I mic them. I love you, Jack. You're nucky. Uh, you <laughs> mic him. That's my guy. Now, how many real life people have wound up in your books? How many real life people? There have been a few ex managers. I don't use their names, though. Mm -hmm. there's this character in um what book was it allegiance i think maybe book five or something like that this character who's still in the series now her name's taryn she's a barista in the airport it's uh mac mac mesa airport it's in um oh my memory i'm getting old anyway <laughs> she's stuck in that she's stuck in the offices uh the managers of the airport's office it's like this glassed in thing that looks out over the concourse and whatnot she's been in there for like 12 days she's eaten all the candy out of the drawers and drank a little couple bottles of water and Taryn this this zombie keeps coming up the stairs just out of habit and pawing the door and the handle and banging against it. his name is Richard Less and all the people called him Dickless <laughs> so she's like Dickless just won't leave her alone and finally she gets to the point where she has to has to take 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 on Dickless and uh, and kill him there's also Subway Karen who's cruising around the concourse she's in her subway outfit but she's undead you know and so there's a few people, but that's the only one I can think of. It. Dickless was after this, this Where's Waldo manager I always had at, at this restaurant I worked at in, for a while. And he'd always come poke his head around, checking on you, make sure you're doing something right or wrong or whatever. So that, that was Richard Less. Well, here I got you one. Uh, just popped up because I saw it because Steve Boosfield actually tagged uh, me in it. Hey, Steve. It says, uh, Pigging off, piggybacking off Jack, which is apparently a big thing in Javin's universe. To everyone, is it just myself that when I go out, I'm checking for emergency exit routes? Mm -hmm. No, you're not the only person. Mm -mm. I like to know where I like to know where extra doors are. <laughs> yep. Primary, yep. secondary, and tertiary escape routes all yep. the time. Everywhere you yep, go. Yep. My wife thinks I'm crazy because when we get on an airplane, I count by hand how many seats from the emergency exit I'm sitting by by hand on the back of the seat. So in case we go down or there's smoke or something, I can touch the seats and I'll know where the emergency is. And, because those lights aren't always going to be on, you know, mm -hmm. it goes down. Yeah. She's like, why are you doing that? You're crazy. You know? Well, gr granted, might, might come in handy someday. There will be smoke well fire. Yeah, for me, the, my parents call me crazy for keeping my chain mail in my room close to me. Uh, you Ready go. to roll at any time. Yep. Do, you, do you buy chain mail or do you make it yourself? I mean, uh, No, I bought, I bought chain this mail. chain mail. But, oh, yeah. cool, cool. I, I'm actually trying to get the shoot and helmet and sword to complete the connection but it's pretty expensive so yeah, yeah. not the not the cheapest of hobbies let's put it that way no trust me i know about not cheap hobbies <laughs> yeah but, that, but but it's cheaper than swords and shields uh that's but this would be let's be frank jack well that's true and really those aren't going to help me much against the zombie horde i'll just be chucking them out of my guess you know ooh, ooh, go ooh, away ooh. i've guns and ammo but that ain't cheap either <laughs> no not got anymore. that right. <laughs> so I want to try to get get like JL Born. JL Born reloads all his own stuff. I looked at some of his Facebook stuff. He, he's pretty self sufficient. That's what I strive to be one day. We'll see. I like to learn how to do that. I got a friend that can do that, but not me. Pat, I, got, I never it. dabbled in it. Yeah. So, do you think you could actually tear a gun down and put it back together if you were in a pinch? In a, like in a pinch, like in a panic pinch. No, I'm not. Yeah. Good. No. Okay. I, I I clean all my own weapons. Okay. But I yeah. know I couldn't do it real quick. No. And I, actually, I did put that Sig 
back together the first time and I, I did something wrong with the, the trigger. So, you know, it, 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 or the bolt, bolt carrier, it's all the same assembly as an AR. And I did something wrong in there the first time I was using YouTube, of course, and, uh, mm-hmm. and the note didn't have any problems at the range, but the damn thing wouldn't fire. So I got home and I figured out, I put this little spring in wrong and we're good to go after that. So, but no, in a, in a scary city, you know, in a, in a, a situation where I'm, <laughs> you know, in high, high stress, I don't think I could, I could do one real quick. No. Okay. Well, sticking with the, staying with that line of high stress, how do you think you would handle a high stress situation just from the shooting perspective? From the shooting, you know, would, you know, would, you know, would be shaky or do you think you would just, Oh, I'm sure the adrenaline would be Jack. Yeah. I'm sure I'd be just like anyone else, man. I haven't been tested by fire. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't mind you. I'm not, my hubris doesn't say I'm going to be Rambo. I'm going to be John Wick. No, no, I know it. I know I'm going to be shaky for a while, but I mean, I've been through some, some shooting courses and stuff. And so I, you know, I know how to do a, a re- quick reload and I know how to do you know, double bag and whatever I could, that would come pretty easy, but doing it under duress. I don't know. I don't have that training. Okay. Um, I wonder if there are any places that could actually train, for someone to be under duress, like a way to have you freaked out and see if you can really actually handle a firearm in a bad situation versus just shooting paper targets, you know, and just kind of standing there. I, I guess military, I that, military yeah. and law enforcement. There, there's some the military going to law too. enforcement. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me back up and see if we got something here. Oh, uh, just so you know, uh, James Dean says, hi, guys. Hey, Sean, good to see you all. So, hey James, good to see you. What's I up, buddy? I'm in Williamsburg. No it's shit. Good, good barbecue over there. Yeah. Burnt yeah I believe ends. we. I believe we have burnt ends. <laughs> shit, y'all don't want me anywhere near y'all if y'all got burnt ends because y'all aren't winning that fight. <laughs> That's good stuff. Even even at 120 pounds, I'm whipping your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let me flip back here. Speaking of which, see, I'm still old school. This is how I keep up with all of y'all. Uh huh. <laughs> on um, paper uh march 12th we will be having james dean on the show so that uh, might be one for you to come back and check out yeah for sure hell maybe even come yeah. on and ask him some questions or something what the hell why not i will i will pop, i mean i'm gonna note that somewhere what can i note it at anyways send me a message pm me or dm me let me know and i will for sure try to get on there that's a saturday is it not uh yes and it'll be at okay. one o'clock our time versus you know the oh, other okay. but of course you know the shows are recorded so if you can't be there live you can always check him out down the road but right, i think right. it'd be kind of neat you know but a holler at you guy there yeah well, we still bread and hung out that scares the cares that was pretty cool oh yeah now how many conventions do you do a year i don't do any hardly no really I did a few handful of them before the plague and now i do none zero i did, did one in town here and i did one in california uh, in long beach down there and i did that one in virginia well williamsburg and a couple other small ones but that, that's it any luck with those no you don't sell very many books i brought so many books home from scares that cares like funny <laughs> but yeah. it's nice to network you know you meet people that it's weird to, it's weird to meet someone that's actually read your books or or you know followed you and then all of a sudden you meet them at somewhere a long ways from your home or whatnot and that's pretty cool though it's really neat that's the best thing about cons is meeting people that you only see them digitally. <clears throat> be a good brand awareness opportunity, you know, just get people aware of, of who you are and what you're, yeah. what you're writing and stuff. Especially for, sure. for you know, a new cards. rookie yourself. Well, I mean, I know for me, just as a fan, I don't write. I don't even pretend like I can write. But the interaction, especially with Facebook and things like that, where you guys will literally communicate with us that to me is probably the best seller that y'all have at your disposal because the moment you make me feel like oh i matter i mean this right. person literally just communicated with me because i'm actually i've been going through this with uh chris philbrook here recently mm-hmm. i found myself at work and i'm i'm listening to adrian's undead uh diary loving it next thing i know i'm starting to get texts from chris about these dice he's making for me and the crew and it occurs to me, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm listening to the guy that's texting with me, mind really? blown. <laughs> and that is just one of the neatest things in the world. And he said, I appreciate that you guys will actually extend yourselves out there like that. Because, 
you figure you get enough fans after a while, you know, you could be just getting blown up, you know, by people just I asking that's questions. What, you could not have, you that's never what, have enough fans. No, that's what gives us Indies a leg up. I think is the fact that we talk to everybody. We're open to communication. Our lines are open. I, I think if I were to message Brad Thor or you, any of us, Brad Thor or Stephen King or somebody, we wouldn't hear back from them. Maybe the nope. publicist or no, nope, not, a, not a might, might like something or whatever on their Facebook, but no, definitely. So that's what sets us apart for sure. And Phil Brooks a cool dude too. I had Mexican mm. with him go over there. I mean, I'm, I, yeah. I mean, I'm off dealing with fans so much. I wouldn't mind being stalked. As creepy uh, as that <laughs> sounds. As creepy know, as that funny. sounds. I'd rather, be is, creep, I'd, rather, I'd rather be creeped out than ignored. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no doubt. There's, yeah, better than better me than ignored. Uh, no, Warren, Jack, first... you can't you can't stalk me, Jack. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read started... Jail's stuff before I even started writing, and then one time he he freaking uh, when I'm a uh, new I'm I'm indie, he went on Facebook and he he said something on one of my posts. And I, I about shit myself. I'm like, holy crap, JL Bourne just said something on one of my posts. And and he actually messaged back. He said, dude, I put my pants on one leg at a time just like you. <laughs> I thought that was pretty mm-hmm. cool. I mean, he's down to earth, you know, humble. And he said it like that. Pretty neat. Yeah, and that's actually, been one of the... Go ahead, Rich. No, go ahead. I've been talking too much. Just say, I've actually had just two of my favorite authors, uh, David A. Simpson and, uh, and Chris Philbrick, have actually, you know, downloaded my books and are listening to him right now and like i'm just like you know man total fangirl mode just mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah baby so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well the thing is i know they're gonna love the boys because the boys are badasses for anybody that doesn't know the wild out southern boys is a new thing that's not stopping anytime soon mm-hmm. trust me on that cool now, have you ever thought about doing a, an actual full-blown series, but do it episodically? So, like, at the end of this book, situation's resolved. Next book, new situation, by the end of that book, resolved. And just carrying on that way. I've done a couple books in my series that are, like, don't pull off the arcs that I leave. Because I leave threads in every book. I learned, I did not the first couple of books. So that was serendipity in the first couple of books. There's a couple of things that happened where it worked out for the rest, but... I, I leave threads in all my books, but there's a couple that I've written where I didn't go from like in begin and end. And then um, I think Fury is kind of like that. Fury is a beginning to end book. And it, it's the next book I'm writing is called Family in the Surviving Zombie Apocalypse series. And it starts out, Raven's going to be older now. So it's going to be, I think I'm going to do a three year time jump. And so hmm. that's going to be kind of neat to, to write it what everyone's been up to and who's still alive and who's not. We'll see. Well, hell, seems like something like that by doing a three-year time jump. If you got down the road and we're like, you know what? Let's let everybody know what happened during the three years. That leaves your door mm-hmm. open for more stuff, which is yeah. phenomenal. Because that's like with Rich. You know, he's doing a novella right now, which is basically a pre, 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 mm-hmm. way back in the day, which sets up for his next book. Um, is that something you've done or have considered doing with any of your main characters, like giving like some way back information, like ancestors type things? No, uh, I haven't thought about that. No, no, that's kind of a pretty cool idea though. I, I read a Lewis Lamore uh, short a few years ago that really stuck with me. It, it, it starts out in the past at a stagecoach where some shit goes down, a stagecoach mm-hmm. stop and uh, someone dies and someone doesn't and whatever that this kids show up. Then it fast forwards through to present day. I don't know what day he wrote this, but it was probably the 80s, 90s. No, it was actually 2000s or something. And one of the ancestors from that beginning is mm-hmm. going back to a family reunion. And the family reunion happens to be right near that stagecoach thing. And it, it, he goes through all of the ancestors before him that went from the one guy that survived from that stagecoach. One of them died in the, in the rice paddies of Vietnam. One of them survived Normandy. Uh, it's just pretty cool how he, he, he do one character's eyes in the present. You got to see everyone that was attached to the person that died at the stagecoach or that survived the attack at the stagecoach uh, stop. Oh, so that something is like pretty that, neat. that would be pretty neat. I, I got kind of misty eyed when this survivor is thinking about all of the, the, you know, the people that have bled in their lineage from that initial thing. And I guess there's a, a cemetery where that stagecoach stop used to be or something. And some of them are buried there. He ties it all together. 
that is kind of cool. I may have to go find that. You may have to send me a little more yeah, information I have it. on it's that. In a, it's in a book, a thick book of his short stories. He has so many books. Because so as a kid, I remember I used to read a lot of uh, Louis L'Amour way back mm -hmm. in the day. And I hadn't even thought about that name in forever until you just brought it up. And now my wheels are turning again because I really did enjoy his stories. Those were so good. I was starting to research how to write a Western just by through his books because every there's different vernacular and, and whatnot. And, but uh, I got back into it. I used to read him in high school and, and after. Well, just make sure when you write your Western, because I have a funny feeling you will write your Western. At some point, somebody's got to get drugged behind a horse because that's just <laughs> it's it's like in everything or somebody falls off yep. the horse, their foot gets stuck. and eh, down yep, the road. Yep. So make sure that's in there. And in fact, if you want, you could have uh, the character that gets drugged by the horse be named Angel. Childress? That'd be kind of fun. Oh, Angel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got another question uh, from Steve Bushfield. Shoot. He asks, Sean, I see some of your guns on your Facebook page. How many do you own? And do your kids shoot yet? Mm. I, I own more than one and less than 20. And um, no, my kids don't shoot yet. Okay. Are you planning on having them start taking, you know, classes or anything at some point? Yeah, if they express interest. My boy expresses interest, but he's, he's 15. And I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, Even though I still, my, dad, young, my yeah. dad had me going at, my dad had me going at five, but it's different now because you know the, the first person shooters and the this and that yeah, well, right. outside, outside influences mm -hmm. but definitely it's going to be first the uh they already know handgun safety both of them know the, the the four tenants and and whatnot but uh no we haven't been to the range yet okay uh we got another question for sean uh, from steve as well how much research goes into your books do you know the areas they are set well and do you have another prior military knowledge or do you have help with it um, I, I, I uh, attribute my prior military knowledge to, to Tom Clancy books and other books that I've read. You know, they're, they're real technical and that kind of got me to, to know how to, to say things correctly and, and think like that. But I have a couple of beta readers that, are, that are, have been there and done that. And just, uh, you know, the research thing, like I said, uh, if I don't know something, I'll put a couple X's there and I'll come back and I'll, I'll research it later. But I do, I do a lot of research. I want stuff to be correct. And, and as far as locales, um, a lot of the locales, I, I just find out about them by reading about them or, you know, you use uh, street view or Google maps or stuff like that. Uh, I did a number of years ago, take the whole family. We flew down to Salt Lake. We got an SUV and we drove the entire route of the surviving the zombie apocalypse. Uh, first few books we went through Jackson hole and, um, Utah and, came back went, went up to uh yellowstone and then we came back down and flew out at you out of salt lake so that was the only thing i saw it after the fact but i was pretty happy that uh, going online and finding out some details helped uh, helped enough to get to make it passable well obviously everyone's seeing it just like i am this man's got some tats what's up with the tats that i keep seeing on the arm what do you got going on there with the with the art uh, my dad was in the feudal Japan, so this is a, a dragon, Japanese dragon, and it's a, an homage to him. I got it. There you go, he, Angel. After he, after he killed himself. Ah, and, nice. And this I, one, I like this it. Is nice, a, nice. This is a Grim Reaper, and it's a it's a cautionary tale, and it's yeah. got uh, skulls and the graveyard and my sobriety date on one of the tombstones, my dad's death date on another, and there's an empty oh. tombstone with nothing on it. So in case I decide to pick up a drink. It's probably where wow. I put my, my last date. So oh, cautionary cool. tale right here. Damn. How many hours did you have to sit in a chair to get those done? I didn't even keep track. It started before the plague. And then I got like when they lifted the restrictions for a little while, I had more hours done and it was stretched over two years. So I didn't really keep huge track, but it's, it's a lot of hours, a lot of hours with the same guy doing it. Well, he's obviously a damn good tattoo artist because those things are gorgeous. I'm happy with his work. Thank you. Well, let's see. We're getting close to the end of the show, but I'm sure I got something else in this addled brain of mine that I need to know before I let you go. Oh, what do you have coming up? Anything brand new that's been sitting on the back burner that you haven't even started yet? Mm, I think we had talked about it, probably the Western. The Western, the okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the, the hitter is something I really haven't talked about much, and that's, I'm writing that right now. Well, in Which fact, give us a little more no on zombies. that because Doug was 
all over himself about the hitter. So give us a little bit into that. Where's that come from and where's it going? It's set in Portland. It's set in the present day. And uh, the team is back in their respective places. I'm writing the backstories on where they, what they've been doing between right. separating from the military and this debacle in Afghanistan where some of their people they put away, it's what it's going to be, are here now. And that's, that's basically all I want to say about it right now. I don't want to spill too much. But so far, we've, we've found uh, Adam Cross, who's one of the, the SEALs, the joint team, um, mm-hmm. Pale Riders. He's, he's surfing in Ocean Beach, California, and he gets the message. Uh, a box is dropped off anonymously at Cade's house in Portland, Oregon. And it's a Pelican case, and it's got some Polaroid pictures, some, uh, some passports with different names, some uh, sat phones, and some other stuff. And the benefactor... The reader doesn't know at first, but it's someone that we know from surviving the zombie apocalypse. And I'm bringing a lot of the characters from that into this new story. And the funny thing is uh, the first part of it, uh, you know, when Brooke sees the Pelican case that come in and she's, she knows what these are because he's got, damn, he's got enough of them up in the, the attic full of stuff to survive the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's not a zombie apocalypse book, but she makes that kind of a reference in her mental that the, the readers that know my other stuff will go, oh, that's funny. See, I love little stuff like that. How often do you work Easter eggs in? Oh, quite often. I do all the time. I do all the time. I freaking love that. Well, gentlemen, we have officially reached the last five minutes of this wonderful hour with the great Sean Chester, who I've absolutely had the best time today hanging out with you, sir. And thank you so much for doing this. Time went As always, I'm telling you, zipped right on by. Well, like I like to always do it. Richard. Where can we find you, bro? All right. Well, you can find me on my uh, Richard R. Rose author page on Facebook. You can also uh, find my author page on uh, Amazon and uh, richardrrose.com, my uh, website. And uh, I have Wild Eyed Southern Boys available on Amazon and uh, Audible, iTunes, and Goodreads available in all formats. And uh, upcoming later this month, uh, maybe early next month, will be the Wild-Eyed Southern Boys prequel. I call it a novella. It's actually going to be more of a short book, uh, <laughs> just a shorter book. It's I'm already over 50,000 words on it. So uh, it's about, done and about ready to go. Yeah, a short novel. <laughs> but, uh, and um, it is official. I have uh, Boo Space secured at the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Festival in Townsend, Tennessee, May 7th. Mark that time, mark that day on your calendar and come on down and pay me a visit. I'll be there and I'll have books to sign. And I'm hearing a rumor that uh, a certain villain might also be there. I will actually have one of the dastardly villains of book two, the Bear Baron, will be there in full costume. So, uh, yeah, it's a definitely can't miss event. Got to be there. Very cool. Angel Ramon, baby, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, so you I see for me, you can find me on the Witten Undead every day posting uh interesting questions and stuff. You can also find me on my fan, fa- uh, fan group on Facebook, the Legionnaires of Anxious Maximus, which is more historical fiction and woman uh centric uh posting. And you can find my books on uh Amazon, you can find me on Angel Ramon to find my Sami books or Anxious Maximus to find my historical fiction and fantasy books. As far as what's coming up, uh. I hope to have my new book finished by the end of the month and hopefully have it out by April uh, for Jack. It's uh, more of a SimCity kind of idea. I've, I've told him before the show, but for those uh, not familiar, Sim, it's going to be more of a SimCity kind of a book. So I hope you enjoy it. And should be it's been a fun book to write so far. Cool. With Greek gods well, and all that and Titans. Nice. Tighten up. Yeah. Well, for everybody that's tuning in, we all know why we're here today. Sean, where can we find you, brother? Well, uh, SeanChesser.com has all my, my stuff there. Uh, Sean Chesser author on Facebook or Sean Chesser uh, Pale Riders is my, my fan fan page. Uh, it's, you can join that if you want. Other than that, I, I don't go to Goodreads too much, just too much like high school. Uh, <laughs> not really. That, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm, I'm accessible on, on social media, so come hit me up. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are out of here. Thank you, Sean. You're the man. I continue 
or I look forward to continuing down the road with uh, the guys in the series. Uh, like I said, I'm about halfway through the first book, and I'm already hooked. I swear there's just so many of y'all that's just driving me crazy, and you're all so good. With that, for Richard Ryan Rose, Angel Ramon, Doug K, who didn't make it, he probably got a little sippy and we lost him, but that's okay. And Sean, the man Chester, I'm Jack, and we are out. Right on. Take care. Now do I get out of here? I'm <laughs> You're trapped. <laughs> I'm trapped. See you guys. Have a great day. Peace <laughs> out, too, man. Well, hail to the yeah. All right.